Welcome to Catch He Gaming. This is Catch He 1383, and Nintendo had a direct on Thursday. I wasn't ready for it, and I probably should have known, but I've been really busy. But the Tokyo Game Show occurred, or at least started, and basically they've handled it the way you know companies have handled it. Just went straight to direct, disseminating the information much faster and a lot better than what they did in the past. So it starts out with a cinematic for yet another Fire Emblem game. Like, I didn't even need to guess. I mean, it was pretty obvious if you... Even through just osmosis alone, I could recognize a lot of these characters. Considering I haven't even... I don't know... How to describe it? Barely even started Three Houses, and they have a sequel, and they have other games. I just can't. I don't know. They seem to be putting out way too many of these to keep up with. So I'm not too excited for it. So this next one, I usually just skip over, but I kind of put it into this category that Nintendo seems to be in of being a little too late to be putting this game out and being excited for it. It Takes Two was fun in terms of its gameplay. In terms of its story, these two are awful people. <laughs> like, I played through it three times just because I liked the gameplay with uh, two friends and my youngest brother. But, yeah, we came to the conclusion that, uh, yeah, Cody and May are just awful then let's move on to a new game fatal frame lunar eclipse or sorry mask of the lunar eclipse i haven't played the first one i have the second one on steam but i was gonna probably wait till october to start playing that maybe stream that you know to go with the season maybe a bit cliche who knows but since it is coming to the west Via the Switch, I thought it was something noteworthy to mention. Then there's an expansion pass for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Anyone who's ever listened to me knows I do not like Xenoblade Chronicles. I thought it was extremely long, extremely boring, and there's one point in the second one where I had to grind just to be able to beat the boss, and it took a really, really long time. And, oh god, the voice acting of... I can't even remember the main character's name. I just hate him so much, though. Like, it just grated on me the whole entire time, and I wish he would just shut up. I wish he just died at the beginning of the game and went with a different character. So I haven't bought three, and I'm probably not going to, especially after the second one and how much time it took. So I skipped over a Spongebob game, but I wanted to come to this one because it's a motion control game, which is just gross, but it's supposed to be a boxing game based on Fist of the North Star. I'm not entirely sure what they were thinking, basing a exercise boxing game off of a game where a guy brutally and viciously murders people and causes them to explode, but okay. And I guess this is supposed to be like a dodgeball game that you see now. Eh. It hasn't really intrigued me all that much. It kind of looks like Gang Beast in a sort of way, but adding projectiles to the game. And then there's Tunic, which I've thought about buying. If I do buy it, I'm probably not going to get it on the Switch. A lot of games, depending on what they are, if they've already been released on, let's say, an Xbox Series X, or even the Xbox One or PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, I'm not going to get it on the Switch. I know it's going to run better on either PC or one of those other systems. Sorry, Nintendo. <laughs> then there's the Front Mission Remake, which I'm actually looking forward to. I've never played it, so this is actually going to be... Uh, Really fun, I think. I'm not too much of a fan of the strategic games like this, but I've you know had moments with them. 
And then they also announced they're doing remakes for the second and the third one. Which seems like they're kind of putting the cart before the horse there. But maybe they managed to gauge it based off of pre-orders. And been like, yeah, let's just move forward with the second and the third one. So this next game isn't unique per se for this Direct. There's a ton of farming simulators. I think this is the only one that doesn't involve combat. But this is Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life. Which is a... I'm not sure if it's a remake or a remaster of A Wonderful Life on the GameCube, otherwise known as Harvest Moon back then. It's this whole complicated thing where I guess they where they went from out of house to in house for altering the games for each country. But the company that did it for them originally published it under Harvest Moon and got to keep it. But they started publishing the Harvest Moon titles under Story of Seasons. So if you ever played a Harvest Moon, let's say, after the GameCube and it sucks, it's because they got to keep it and just start publishing titles under that. I thought about streaming this one, but now that this is coming out, I probably won't until this comes out. But if you're looking for something a little bit more fast-paced, there's other farming simulators that are probably more up your alley, like Stardew Valley. Or maybe the Final Fantasy Harvest Stella one that's coming out. Don't care about Splatoon 3. I despise multiplayer only games. I think they do have like one co-op based game. But I'm not about to buy a whole entire game just for that. Then they announced Octopath Traveler 2. It was a good looking game for the most part. And it was fun. But it's a good example of a game that drags on for way way too long i still haven't beaten it i'm 50 something hours in on the game or not gamecube on the switch yeah no and i saw how much time they expect you to put into it which is like another 100 hours and i just don't have the time for that sorry not 100 another 50 hours but yeah no uh yeah i'm probably not gonna go with this one either due to its length and here's fay farm one of the other farming simulators like i said there's four of them in this direct and this feels like yeah let's get this out before harvest stella comes out because let's face it harvest stella looks a lot better than this does and continuing on with the farm simulator rune factory 3 i'm not sure if that's the primary focus of it since you do fight monsters and transform into them but it's similar enough to the others that i'm going to count it I'm not sure if this is a remake or just a remastered. Uh, yet again, it looks better than the last one, to be honest. So, yeah. So they announced a bunch of Nintendo 64 games coming out. And then they made this big, huge deal out of GoldenEye coming to it. So I was a kid. Like before I was a teen when this came out during its peak and unless I'm like a speedrunner which I'm not because I don't really care I don't know why they think this is a big deal there are far better first person shooters at this point than GoldenEye I mean I guess they're banking on nostalgia then I guess the next noteworthy thing is Factorio I have this on PC and it's definitely a fun game. I'm not sure how it's gonna run on the Nin I was about to say <laughs> how it's gonna run on the Nintendo Switch. So again, this is under that same category of a little too late. So then they had Miyamoto come on and talk a little too much about the Pikmin mobile app. I mean augmented reality was, you know, neat at first, but then he announced Pikmin 4. Which was the highlight of the whole entire thing. Not the whole entire direct, but in terms of this little segment, yes. I mean, I've been waiting for Pikmin 4 for a while. I bought it on the Wii U, and then I bought the Switch version as well, which is better than the Wii U version by far. Alright, skipping over a Ubisoft dance game, going to Harvest Stella, the Final Fantasy farm game fourth one in the direct 
not much to say. I mean, it looks better than the others. I'm not sure how it's going to run on the Switch. Seems to put a little bit more emphasis on combat than the others, though, than the actual farming bit. So then there was the announcement of Resident Evil Village Cloud Edition. I'm not entirely sure how the cloud versions play on the Switch. I haven't tried. I'll have to before I can form an opinion on whether it's going to suck. Something tells me it's not going to play that great due to the fact that you have to more or less download it from a cloud. Because we all know, you know, streaming services for video games are that great. Looking at you, Stadia. I skipped over some more, including a rhythm game from Square Enix. Don't know why they thought that was a good idea. But uh, they're covering Crisis Core Reunion, which I wanted to play, but I didn't own a PSP. But I'm glad they're bringing it to all the systems. Yet again, probably won't buy it on the Switch. I'll probably get it on my uh, or my PS5. Sorry, Nintendo. I'm going to go with a better option in terms of how it's going to run. Hopefully I don't eat my words on that one, though. So we have another GameCube remastered, Tales of Symphonia. It seems remasters are the only way we're going to get GameCube ports. I don't know why they don't have more of them. The GameCube was a great system. Too bad it underperformed, but it was a good system. I had more games on it than I had for my other, like the PS2. PS2, yeah, there's a lot of systems sold, but it also had the most garbage on it. And it had its share of garbage. So did the Wii, but gosh, the PS2, the amount they had was so much worse. Then again, I'd have to say the quality of garbage was far worse on the Wii than it was the PS2. Sorry I went on a tangent there. And lastly, the biggest announcement of the Direct. The official title for the sequel to the Breath of the Wild, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, along with some gameplay footage. I am definitely looking forward to this one. So if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching, especially putting up with my, I don't know, cynical opinions of some of this. It was kind of a disappointing direct, to be honest. I mean, there was a lot of games they've already announced, so it was just a repeat, which when they repeat too much, it just doesn't feel exciting to watch. And it actually kind of dragged through at the time, and I watched it live, and people were going, uh, typing out Z's and stuff. Alright guys, have a good one.